happy Vlogmas Day 7! Cue the Bare Naked Ladies song, guys, because it has been one week. I'm so excited that after seven days, you guys are still watching the daily vlogs. I guess I have about two more weeks plus a couple days um and it's just been a lot of fun i'm super excited i'm not getting tired of this so i hope that you're not i won't lie though it's been a lot to film all day long and then process that video and export it and get it uploaded for the next day like it's a lot <laughs> anyway it has been a lot of fun though and i'm still enjoying it i am interrupting your normally scheduled vlog to bring you a video that is highly anticipated and highly requested i filmed a haul video from the incredible estate sale that i was able to go to in kentucky where i found the most amazing brands and i still haven't been able to get that haul video out due to vlogmas so today's vlogmas episode is going to be that haul video and i promise you will not be disappointed stick around to the very end of the video i'm still going to include the elves and what they were up to. But without further ado, here is the haul video of the coolest estate sale, the best estate sale ever. This one's going to be pretty exciting, especially if you like luxury or designer brands. Um, I stumbled upon an estate sale that you're not going to believe. Most of these brands I have never seen in person. You know I'm not into spending a whole lot on sourcing and inventory, but somehow managed to spend like $1,700 at this estate sale. Oh boy. So last Wednesday, my friend Alicia sent me a link to a Facebook post where a local estate liquidator was, uh, well, he was advertising some things that were going to be um, for sale at a woman's estate who had passed. Um, she passed in her 70s, but she was a lifelong collector and she was an art history major. So already right off the bat, like there's going to be some incredible stuff at this estate. But then a tag on top of that, that she had incredible taste and, um, Definitely a taste for luxury and designer items. Just from looking through the photos, you could see Louis Vuitton, Chanel. I thought for sure that one of the items was a Chanel flap bag. So I scheduled to be at this estate sale like a three and a half, four hours before they opened just to ensure that I would be one of the first people in the door. I got to the estate sale plenty early. I was the 11th person in line. They ticketed the first 25 people we were allowed to walk in first. And the bags that you see in this photo were already gone by the time I even made it to that closet and that was being the 11th person in line. Now you might assume that all the Louis Vuitton bags in the upper closet being gone would be like something super detrimental and you might be sad about the estate. But I was headed to this closet to check out this bag in particular which I thought could be a brown Chanel flap bag vintage. Well, the bag was not. So not only did I miss out on the Louis Vuittons in the upper part of the mink fur closet, but the Chanel was not a Chanel. So what's a girl to do but to find incredibly fantastic items elsewhere in this home that had been overlooked by the other people at the estate sale? I found some things that you guys are not going to believe. Now, I actually ended up two days at this estate sale, even though it's a three-hour round trip. Um, the first day I went and I bought 107 items and spent about $1,400. Two days later, I talked my husband into going back over with me. We made the three hour round trip one more time and spent about $300. Um, so I don't know how many items that I got in that second trip. And then the very first day I checked out two different times. So there's three different checkouts, three very different sets of pricing. I'm going to try to explain to you guys why things were priced the way, the way that they were. The clothing was not priced. So you were basically just supposed to gather up the clothing that you wanted, approach them, and they would give you a price. Well, for someone like me that's buying in bulk, that could be a little bit intimidating. But when I had the first bulk of clothing that I could not live without, the girl gave me like yard sale prices. I'm talking $2, $4, $6 I think was the most she charged me for an item. The second time that I checked out, well, I got the guy that does the estate liquidation and he wasn't so generous on the pricing, especially when he saw some of the brands I was picking out. The third time I checked out was the second day I was there and he was the most unfair with the pricing. I mean, he was charging me five times what she charged me that very first time that I checked out for some of the same type of items. I bought everything. I thought it's all going to come out in the wash. And there is one item that I believe I overpaid for and one item that I didn't check out well enough. You'll see what those are, but I just had to kind of preface uh, the items that you're going to see and the, the vast contrast that you're going to see also in the pricing with that story. So let's see what all I got. 
One very last thing before I get into it, I am going to say there are a lot of items here. So for the sake of this not being a three hour long video, I'm going to keep commentary to a minimum from this point on. Okay, so the very first item that, this was not the first thing that I found, but this is the first thing I'm going to show you guys, this Burberry's coat. This is a women's trench, really beautiful, very classic with what you would call the Nova check inside. Um, I'm not sure the size on this one, but I paid $35 for this and hope to get around $200 for this. The next item that I found was actually one of the first things that I found. When I saw that the Chanel bag that I was looking at was not a Chanel bag and then someone had already ran into the coat closet with all of the fur coats and grabbed all of those Louis Vuitton bags, I went straight to the case and wanted to look at this Epi. This is Louis Vuitton Epi leather and this is the Petite No. Um, I overpaid for this. I overpaid for this because as soon as I grabbed it and everyone was going nuts over the Louis Vuittons, a lady said, what brand is that? That bag I said it's Louis and I'm surprised that more people don't understand that this is the epi leather from the Louis Vuitton um anyway they wanted $325 for this truth be told the resale market on this is probably around $300 I have seen some go for four um 400 plus but very seldom so I don't know if I should just hold on to this maybe you know around certain time periods when there's fewer listed I will be able to get more for this but I definitely feel like I paid at the top of the market for this Louis Vuitton bag but at that point, I wasn't leaving without one. And when she said, if you don't want that, I do, I was not gonna set it back down for anyone else to have it. It was like me being super petty out of spite <laughs> because I was like half upset that the bag that I wanted was not what I thought it was. And then half upset because someone came and swiped all of the Louis Vuitton, which I would have done the same thing. So I don't blame her a bit, but the next item that I found Moschino um, shoes. So these are like a jelly flat. They are clear. Um, the dust bag is in here as well, which is super important. Moschino is a an Italian designer. Um, and super, super high end. So these, I will probably ask around $150 to $200 for these. And I paid <laughs> $3. So paying $3 for these shoes kind of evens out. I, I keep trying to think about how everything evens out in the end with the me overpaying for the Louis Vuitton bag. But then I tell myself, I'm like, but you didn't have to buy the Louis Vuitton bag to get the good prices and everything else. So I don't know that it really does even out. Um, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. I've already paid for it now. I got two corsets and these are like old um, bone, like steel boned corsets. Really, really beautiful. This one, I don't know if there is a brand. There is a brand here. Um, Artis, 63% natural, 21% uh, nylon, hook and eye uh, ribbon not included. So yeah, a really beautiful um, steel boned corset here and then um, this one is for sure steel boned this one is made in England and um, I'm not really I mean I paid like two or three dollars for these this one is I mean this is a phenomenal corset I think I'll be able to get a little bit of money out of this one for sure um, I don't know if these two should be worn together the first one was more like like a waist trainer style but this one is absolutely like a good old-fashioned beautiful corset so let's hope I can get, I don't know, 30 to $50 for this, unless I research it and it's just something phenomenal that I don't know about. <laughs> um, I got this pair of Ferragamo shoes. These were $1 and they're just Ferragamo slingback. So this isn't like the most desirable style in the world right now. It's just going to, the brand is what's gonna carry these for probably about 30 or $35. Again, I paid $1, so I'm okay with that. These are Vivian Westwood for Melissa, like a collaboration between Vivian Westwood and Melissa. The Melissa being those plastic shoes um, that are super, super popular. These again look like they're practically brand new. I paid $5 for them and they look like they could go between anywhere between $50, $70. Um, you know, if I can, if I could ask $100 for these and probably do best offer, just being that they have Vivian Westwood's name tied to them. So a good $5 investment there for what I'm going to be able to get off of them, even if it's just 50 bucks that meets my 10 times my money um, that I'm always aiming at here is this adorable little bag this was only two dollars no this was three dollars this is just an adorable little um, leather vintage bag nothing super special about this but I'm confident I can get between 20 and 30 dollars for it and I just thought it was so pretty the price was right I would have picked it up at a thrift store so why not pick it up at this estate sale um, it was in very good condition and it's a cross-grain leather 
here's a brand that I have had on my bucket list for a long time and I got two of these actually. This is Judith Lieber. Judith Lieber is a brand that still exists today. Um, they actually have a perfume out that I'd really like to try. I paid $65 for this bag. So again, that is really paying up for me. Um, but this beautiful uh, Judith Lieber, I'm hoping uh, was a good investment. It does have a few condition issues um, and it's a wicker leather with a gold and silver chain strap kiss lock closure so i mean hopefully i can get at least a hundred dollars for this but um i will definitely aim it more just considering that it is vintage and i'll show you the other judith lieber that i got that i really paid up for this was um not considering a lot that I bought of items, um, this was the second most expensive single item that I bought. This is $225 Judith Lieber snakeskin bag. So this is a snakeskin leather with beautiful gold hardware, and then there are extras in here. So Judith Lieber is really, really famous for lots of um, bling, <laughs> lots of bedazzlement, and usually her bags are like, they're shaped like something, kind of like how modern day Kate Spade does um, maybe like there's a watermelon bag or something. Judith Lieber bags are often like maybe it's an ice cream cone but it's an ice cream cone covered in Swarovski crystals or something like that. So you have crystals on the kiss locks here um, and then inside there are some extras here. So there's this little mini coin purse and then there is this little bag that says Judith Lieber here and inside this is just so beautiful is this mirror and this tiny little Judith Lieber signed comb. So um, I'm not really sure what the comps would be if I separate this and have the comb and mirror separate and then the bag also, but I'm hoping that I can get uh, more for the bag than what I paid for it. Again, it was almost one of those things where like it was a brand I knew and I was excited about it. So we already have um, a little bit that I have overpaid on two items, but I promise you guys I did better than that for the rest of the sale. There's a piece of paper in here. I'm really anxious to see what it is. Oh, there are no finer materials than those used in this handbag. However, no material can be guaranteed not to crack, fade, or spot. If it gets wet, wipe it immediately with a soft cloth. I hope you will enjoy wearing this bag. That's inside the Judith Lieber. I don't know that she ever carried this bag. Um, anyway, so yeah, I mean, if I could get closer to $500 for this bag, that would be great. I promise you guys I did better and I didn't overpay for everything, as you can tell with like the Burberry and um, the shoes and things that I've already shown you. So <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry, your girl did better. I bought this picture for me. So this little bunny is dressed, in, she's in a dress, a little girl, and she is playing like Ring Around the Rosies with the skeleton. And I just think this is phenomenal. It will probably go down here. Um, I will get a long frame for this and it will go on this gallery wall in my basement. I just think that this is so beautiful. I told you guys she is an art collector, so that was only three bucks. Then I bought this pair of I bought this pair for $2. These are Ferragamo also with the very famous Ferragamo um, clasp there. So I don't know. I mean, these have a little bit of cracking on the toes, um, but for $2, like I really couldn't pass these up. I'm hoping that, you know, the very famous closure here and the logo detail will carry these. And hopefully I will get, you know, between $30 and $50 for this pair of Ferragamo. But I don't know. These might go for a bit more just because of that closure there. Another pair of Ferragamo shoes that I found. Um, these were for Sa Saks Fifth Avenue, which a lot of her wardrobe was. And these Ferragamo were only $1. So um, couldn't pass these up. If I found Ferragamo for a dollar at the thrift store, I would definitely buy it. So again, why would I not at this estate sale? I found something for 50 cents at this estate sale and we were just talking about little watermelon bags. Well, here is a watermelon coin purse. I didn't see any branding on this. I think it might've said made in China. Oh, there's like toothpicks and stuff in it. There is a tag. Let me see if this tag says anything. Handmade in China is all it says. And um, I think this lady was a smoker. So there's a little bit of like musty odor and a little bit of smoky odor on some of these items. We'll definitely have to take care of that since most of them are luxury items. Um, it was nothing so offensive that you didn't want to buy it. Okay, this beautiful vintage um, clutch Again, a, a little bit of condition issue over here, but this thing was cheap enough. I paid $5 for this. The brand is, I think that might say Marigold inside, but it's just this beautiful little um, metal clutch. 
with like a snakeskin leather inserts on either side. So I'm confident that this thing will bring at least $30 and I paid five for it. Here is the other Louis Vuitton item that I was able to buy and it is this Louis Vuitton checkbook cover. So they only had $20 on this. That's kind of crazy knowing that they had $325 on the purse that I bought. I heard that the three pieces that I showed you guys pictures of, I'll insert them again here. These three pieces were, someone said $95 a piece. I don't know if that's true. I never made it in there before those pieces were gone, but I can tell you that this checkbook cover was only $20. These go easily for $200 on eBay, but I think I'm going to hang on to this one. Um, I'm not, not really positive about it, but I think I, I think I'm gonna just hang on to this. This is a, a really beautiful and simple piece. I found a few dust covers and I went through all of them and grabbed the ones that I could, I had items to go with. Um, this is a Ferragamo dust cover. So I don't know if this would add enough value to the pair of shoes or if I should just sell this separately for like 10 or $15. Um, and then I found this Judith Lieber dust cover and so again since I had a bag I decided to go ahead and grab that and then this one is Ferragamo again so if you're not familiar with um, dust bags definitely pick these up when you see them I mean the low end you know like Ferragamo and stuff which would be the low end on the collectible dust covers coach anything like that 10 to 15 dollars but a high end like Chanel or Gucci could get you 20 to 30 dollars for the right dust bag but you know 20 bucks anyway my friend Alicia, who was there with me, found this belt, and inside it is um, YSL, so Yves Saint Laurent on this, and I was able to find some other Saint Laurent pieces, but um, this is, I mean, like, nothing about this screams that it's Saint Laurent, for sure, um, so the brand will be the reason why this sells, because if this didn't have a brand on it, I wouldn't have even picked it up, but I think that someone, you know, a collector of YSL would probably like to have it. I'm a collector of Gucci, and I have several items that you would never know are Gucci um, if you if you didn't know if I didn't tell you I guess um, not that I walk around telling people my, my items are Gucci <laughs> that would be weird Speaking of Gucci, here is this little Gucci handkerchief. This was $35. I have not comped this out because since I am a collector, I will probably be keeping this piece. But this is just a little scarf, little hanky here. And I was just saying the other day that I don't have a hanky. So here is the signature on there, Gucci in script. And then it has um, horse saddles all around the perimeter here. This is a beautiful little piece and I could keep this and just tie it on to one of my bags is probably what I will do. I have a Gucci bag that I bought recently that I have a scarf of a different brand tied to it um, because I did not own a Gucci scarf. So this $35 is a personal buy for me. How about this for $35? I got Tiffany and Company glasses. So there are two cleaning cloths. This one clearly doesn't go with it. You can see the difference in the Tiffany blue and this dark blue one that's in there. But these Tiffany glasses, again, will go for over $200 over on eBay. These need to be cleaned up, but they are a vintage Tiffany glasses. Uh, yeah, 20 or $35 rather. Uh, they just need to be cleaned up. And, you know, I don't know if I will be able to get 200 out of them because of their condition, but 150 anyway, I'm pretty confident about. I mean, who doesn't want a pair of Tiffany glasses, right? Okay, this is um, $8.50 and it's just a gorgeous, just a gorgeous uh, manicure set. Look how beautiful this is. So we have a nail buffer on this side, um, cuticle trimmers. I'm throwing pieces around. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have cuticle pushers and cuticle trimmers and they're just just so beautiful. They are on this, like, I don't know if this is a celluloid or what exactly it is, these little mid-century uh, striped handles and in a leather and satin case. So there's absolutely nothing not to love about this set, especially for $8.50. It was clear that this was going to come home with me. Um, I thought about keeping it because I, I do enjoy taking care of my nails, but I don't know. I might just sell this. It has a couple pair of scissors in there. It has one piece that's missing. I'm not sure exactly what that might have been. Um, um, but I just thought that this was really, really beautiful. My friend Alicia found this as well. So for $8.50, that one was kind of a no-brainer. That's, that's another item that, like, even if it's not, not worth a lot, it's worth saving. 
I bought this on the second day that we went to the sale and I got it for five dollars. Uh, Madame Rocas is the brand and this perfume looked to be going between fifty and eighty dollars online. Um, when you sell perfume though on eBay you can only sell new perfume but you can sell the bottle to a collector. So ensure that you are putting this under collectible bottles as the category and not under perfumes because in perfumes you can only sell new. Oh, another purse that I found. Um, and again, my friend Alicia found this one. This is another Ferragamo bag. And this one was $35. It includes the dust bag inside of it, but just a beautiful vintage velvet Ferragamo bag. Um, $35 buy, and I will aim at around $200 once again for this beautiful bag. I wish it was a more classic Ferragamo logo here, um, but I'm, I'm still confident with just the construction of this. So it's definitely a suede leather and it has Ferragamo also on the handle here as well. This piece is just beautiful. So um, again, I will price probably at around 200, maybe $220 and take offers. And, and I'll be open to offers on any of these items, but I know their value and I know that I've never seen some of these brands in person and I don't know when the next time I will see these brands around here is. So I'm not going to just let these go for nothing because I live in a tiny little town where nobody knows or wears or has really even heard of some of these brands. <laughs> I found a pair of Stuart Weitzman shoes for $1, so um, these came home with me. Again, I will price these around $30. Um, I just recently listed some Stuart Weitzman from Mr. Seymour, and that's where I priced them at, is right around, you know, $25, $30 mark. Um, this was a brand, I picked these up uh, just because, they were like a dollar, and I want to turn them over. They said made in Spain, and I was like, well, these could be something. Uh, Ray Raymond Tenza? Raymond Tenza? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, but um, these, the, once I comped them out, they weren't anything just ecstatic, but um, they were definitely worth the $1 or $2 that I, I paid for them to be able to get 10 times my money or more. I will probably aim at around $30 to $50 for these as well. Okay. We were joking around, like kidding with some people while we were in line. Um, everyone was saying like, well, some people were saying what they were there for. Everyone was obviously kind of hush hush about it. And I said I was there for pencils and everyone was just dying laughing at me. I said, Bench, pencils sell so well, you guys don't even know. Well, I found a bag of pencils. I found them for $1.50. And one of the reasons I picked them up was the fonts that I saw on some of these pencils because I know there's $20 worth of vintage pencils just right there, even though there's a lot of junk here that I might have to um, redone or you know some of it I mean who doesn't need a highlighter but I saw this pin in there as well and I saw that it said cross so I thought for a dollar fifty I don't even have to open that up and try to see what the uh, metal count is I'm just gonna buy it well turns out there was a set a mechanical pencil as well as a ballpoint pen cross and they were 1 20th um, 14 karat gold filled so I should be able to get between 20 and 30 dollars just for that pen set um, just the fact that they are gold filled. So um, when you do find gold though, it's important to note whether or not it is gold or gold filled or gold plated. Um, <laughs> that makes all the difference in the world. Had they been like 18 karat gold period or like 24 karat gold or something, we would be talking about like a thousand to two thousand dollars for the same set. So be sure you understand the gold um, content of an item before you get too excited about it. Okay, I have a few small items to tell you guys about. This is a Tom Ford lipstick. I'm not really sure. I, it just says TF there on the front. I'm not really sure if I will list this or if I will just put this on my vanity as like a display piece. I am one of those people that thinks that the beautiful bottles are, are really nice. This is a Marc Jacobs mascara. I'll probably open that and take a peek and see if it's anything worth keeping myself. Um, he charged me a dollar a piece for these, so nothing lost if they're not anything fantastic. And then these agate, I think they're agate, um, these chess pieces, I got an entire chess set that are these like Aztec style, um, I don't think the entire bag is inside this Ikea bag, but basically it's an entire chess set like this and then the board is glass. He charged me $12.50 for the whole set and I may only be able to get around $30 for them, so I will turn a profit, but um, I, 
I just didn't think that they were going to be that expensive. It was another one of the items that wasn't marked that you just had to bring up there and get a price. And this was the last day. And I'm telling you guys, like he was being harsh on the prices, even though he had already seen me spend $1,400 here and came back from out of state a second day. Like I feel like he was harder on me the last time that I checked out than any other day. I don't know if he was testing me or what. I didn't try to negotiate his prices. Somebody that I'd like to forge a relationship with in the future, you know, if I continue to come to his sales, maybe I'll be able to get a better deal later on down the road. Um, so it was worth it to pay $12.50. Again, I know I'm going to turn something of a profit. Um, I would just have loved if that whole bag was like two or three dollars, but we can't always have thrift store prices, right? <laughs> okay, there is something super exciting in that bag that I'm about to tell you guys about. But before I do, let me tell you about this super exciting thing. I bought gloves and when I think about how many pair of gloves I actually bought um yeah I probably can do this video in one part <laughs> we'll see we'll know by the end of the video if I was able to tell you guys about everything or not so I bought these they're just really really thin fine leather gloves most of them are vintage Saks Fifth Avenue and most of them cost me about two dollars these are phenomenal. These are so beautiful. Just little driving gloves. Um, they go between $20 and $30 unless there's something just immaculate and special about them. And I got, I don't know how many, how many pair. I got one, two, three, four, five. Look at these little white ones here with the pearl snaps on them. Six, seven. How pretty are these? Look at that, look at those bows. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Look at this, these are like an ostrich. Look at that, 14. More red ones, 15. And then some of these are like little motorcycle gloves. Like, um, look at the cutout in these. Okay, so that's 18. Like these have the original Saks Fifth Avenue tag on them and they were 1850 when they were purchased. So yeah, these are amazing. Look at these have flowers like, these have like flowers embroidered all over them. 19, 20. 22, 22. And so I saw it right away, recognized it from the pictures, and this Hermes scarf, I said, how much do you want for this? He said $150. Um, okay, so if you're unfamiliar, Hermes scarves can go anywhere. I mean, low end on an Hermes scarf is $200. Um, $300 is probably, you know, more typical and average. They can go up to $2,000 if they are the right and rare and vintage scarf. So he says $150. There was probably, I don't know, nine or 12 scarves maybe in this in this basket. And I said, how much for the whole basket? He said it would be thousands of dollars. I'd have to look through there. And I'm like, thousands, okay. And I said, are there other Hermes? He said, yes. And so I pulled out four total Hermes scarves. And when I pulled up the second one, I think it was this one, I said, how much for this? And he said $75. So I'm like, 75 for this Hermes, but 150 for this Hermes, and four of them. I'm like doing this math in my head, and I'm thinking if he could, if I could get him to take $75 a piece for them. So I said, would you take $300 for these four? And he looked at me, and he looked back down at like the red Louis Vuitton bag that he already had at his feet because everything out of the case he had to have with him. Um, and he said, since you're spending money today, yes and so I got all four of these for three hundred dollars well when I get home I realized that this one is not Hermes I don't know how I messed that up you guys I promise this is my last big goof up of this estate sale but this is not Hermes so I don't know whether or not like I I'm, I haven't been able to find exactly the brand on it yet so I mean even if I looked at the fact that I paid a hundred dollars a piece for these Hermes scarves it's still like I'm still in the green I'm still able to profit but not as much as I would have liked to. Let me show you guys what these Hermes scarves look like though because they are so beautiful. This one is like a circus print. It's so fantastic. So made in France, Hermes. Look at this one. Is this so beautiful? 
and it has a rolled hem of course they're 100 silk like i say made in france and um i know i will turn a profit on them i'm just like a little sick that like how did i not see because i swear i feel like i looked at every single one to find Hermes on it. So I don't know if that one just fooled me because it was super good quality um, or what exactly happened. I'll open that one up and show it to you. And it has like, there's some brand with an F on it. It's not Hermes though. And like you would want to think, oh, well, if it was in this lady's house, it's probably another like equally impressive brand. But guys, she had like, like she would have um, Christian Dior hanging right next to like Target. <laughs> like I'm telling you she like was my kind of girl I wear a Gucci belt with thrifted jeans you know what I mean anyway here is the scarf that is not Hermes it's beautiful and it has like it almost looks like it says fear I don't know if f-i-e-r-l fairlius I don't know what it says I I mean I would try to do you see this I, I can't tell what that says and I guess I'll use Google Lens to try to figure it out. I mean it is signed and it's signed all over like that name brand is all over it. I'm hoping maybe it's something that's at least worth $100. I feel like it's really difficult to get $100 out of a scarf. <laughs> you know there are a few brands that are actually going to command that or carry that. Hermes being the largest of those. Um, Chanel. Uh, silk scarf would also carry you know incredible value um, Gucci probably in a silk like this would would command that but I don't know what this brand is and I don't know if I messed up so okay guys I have to be a respecter of your time and I just feel like if I go through the remainder of this clothing I'm gonna push this video to be over an hour long even the most interesting subject to me on YouTube I have difficult time you know just focusing on that for one hour stretch so this is going to conclude part one of this but you guys haven't even seen the clothing that I bought yet <laughs> I have already listed some of it I drafted the first maybe 15 pieces and was over a thousand dollars in value so again brands I have never seen before in my life I am as soon as I sign off here filming this second video so yeah it's it's coming right out don't worry just subscribe turn on notifications um, and definitely like this video if you like this video if you are as shocked as I am about some of the brands that I found. Let me know what was your favorite piece or what was your favorite brand? What was the, the brand that if you saw it, you would just be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> because there were definitely things in there that I just, they blew my mind. Um, they are going to have another sale. Her mother's fashion is going to be in this sale and I will absolutely be going back. That's not gonna happen until February. And then they'll have a third sale where all of the items are on sale. So, um, the second video is going to be mainly clothes and then also the things that my husband found that I would not have even been looking for. So I say mainly clothes and now I'm thinking of like five other things other than clothing that are actually going to be in that video. So stick around, subscribe, turn on notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. God bless you and remember, treat your business like your business. All right. <laughs>